ever. Is his the best team? Is he the MVP? We have answers to those questions. And I promise we get back to Lamar. Statement win for the Ravens. Have they found the formula? Is it actually a good idea? We'll answer all those questions and more on a Monday edition of Get Up, starting right now. Here we go. We start with the quote. Doug Peterson, he laid it out last week. We're going to win that football game, referring to their primetime showdown with how about them Cowboys last night. Sole possession of first in the East on the line, and it could not, Dan, start worse for the Eagles. What a great job by these young linebackers. Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith, Vice, Dallas Goddard. Ball pops out, stall the Eagles' drive early on in the first quarter. And it sets up this. How about this creative play from the Cowboys' offense? It's not a zone read. It's not a speed option. It's a little bit of a college triple option. You use some motion. You give your quarterback, Dak Prescott, a give read. You give him a pitch key. And then you get Tavon Austin, still a really good athlete, out in space, turn the turnover into points for Dallas. His first rushing touchdown in two years, so it's 7-0 Cowboys. Next Eagles possession. Rex Demarcus ball. Lawrence. Hey, he heard your message loud and clear, Doug Peterson. And by the way, he just made a huge play. That Dallas defense was dominant. And it sets up another touchdown. So right off the bat, as Zeke goes in, now it's 14-0 off of the two turnovers. Ensuing possession for the Cowboys. They take advantage. And then the next one, Amari Cooper. Boy, they missed him. This is called filth. This route by Amari Cooper right here. They motion him over, and it's a sluggo. Slant, turn the head. Foot in the ground and go. Nice throw by Dak, but an absolutely filthy route by Amari Cooper. So Cooper's got moves, and Zeke says, you know what? So do I. Watch him make people miss. I wonder what it's like to be in the open field with Zeke Elliott. Brandon Graham, Martin Malcolm-Jenkins overrun. Watch him put his foot in the ground right there. Right foot, swim by with Brandon Graham and continue to feed 21. So now we're in the final the seconds of the half. The Cowboys are lining up for a 63-yard field goal. L. It's the greatest kicker and kick I've ever seen. He's got like three over 60. Put him in the Hall of Fame. Not there you go, Pat. <laughs> That's a good imitation of Pat McAfee. That's well done. I thought it was Tom Dempsey. And then finally, <laughs> that here comes Dak Prescott taking it in for a touchdown. I'm the only one at the table who knows who Tom Dempsey was. But the Cowboys <laughs> run away and hide with a big win. When your I'll rival win. makes a statement that they'll win the game and you disprove that, how does that feel? I told him to shut up, Nana. All right. So what do you think he's doing now? Don't ask me about that man no more, bro. <laughs> Do you feel like you were overconfident coming into this no. one? No, not at all. Is this the worst loss since you've been here? It's either one or two, yes. All right, and so listen, if you think the Cowboys didn't pay attention, clearly they did. You heard Demarcus Lawrence and here's Zeke saying, honestly, we don't give a bleep what Doug Peterson says, which obviously means they do, and if you're just joining us, show's been a little crazy today because we had Adam Silver here. So, Rex, you've made a lot of these points about the Doug Peterson guarantee. And then we got into a conversation about how Lane Johnson was complaining in Philadelphia that guys were late for meetings. Yeah. Things seem to be going wrong. And it does beg the question. The one thing we didn't get to in that conversation 15 minutes ago is this team just looks better when Nick Foles was their quarterback than it does with Wentz. Now, listen, oh, no. I've, come, I've come around on Wentz. I think Wentz is a spectacular player. I watch him play in spectacular. And yet, they just don't seem to play as well around him. That can't be, or can it be, a coincidence? No, I mean, I think both things can be true. You know, I think we can sit here and say, man, Carson Wentz is spectacular because he had many plays last night that were spectacular football plays. I would argue he had more really good individual plays than Dak did. Now, Dak probably operated his offense cleaner and more efficiently and certainly in situational football. But, I mean, that pick is late in the game. The fumble's not on him. The drops – like, the both things could be true, that Carson Wentz is spectacular and that Nick Foles operated this team certainly in situations. I think the Eagles are this, Greeny. I, I got to <clears> – <throat> the Eagles right now are a team that we all thought was more talented than they actually are. And we lost sight of the bigs, the big men up front. What happens when you have big men up front, which is the, what the Eagles have had for years, is it covers up all your other flaws. It covers up your flaws at secondary, and it covers up your flaws at lack of receiver. Well, the Eagles lost some bigs, not only with like Chris Long and Michael Bennett, but there's two guys, you know, um, uh, um, J Jason Peters didn't play yesterday, right. and two defensive linemen, Jernigan is, is hurt. And so the lack of bigs has, has exposed the flawed back end. Their secondary stinks. Their wide receivers have no juice to get downfield. So, listen, we could pound on Carson Wentz all we want. It is not Carson Wentz in Philadelphia right now.
The saddest takeaway, though, is that because of what we saw yesterday, Stephen A. will not be walking in in a cowboy hat. <laughs> I thought that the no Cowboys doubt. weren't good and they were a terrible team, and let's just let's just write them off. And Dak Prescott, this is why he hasn't gotten paid. Coach, who is this team? What well, did you first see off, from them? you saw the difference when you have your two tackles. Okay. And these aren't just average tackles. Best left tackle in football and an outstanding right tackle. So, to me, you put that back in there. Dak had time to throw the football, did a great job. You talked about it, Dan, earlier in the show. They were more creative. Well, why? Because they're playing at home. That's why you get all these exotic motions, everything else. And they're smart. You're looking at, we saw that the, uh, the triple option they yeah. ran. Because why? They, you run the option when you have numbers. Yep. That's why you run the option. They know they're playing a cover one. Well, standard runs don't work in it, but the option always does. You always had the numbers in your favor. So they were smart. They did some uh, smart things, but it starts with protection and being able to run right. the football. If they can do that, they can beat anybody. Did you discredit Boy Wonder? Kellen Moore for the cover? Wow. No, I, I credited Jason Garrett. You want, okay. to credit, you want to credit this Boy Wonder all the time. All it is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to credit Jerry Jones for putting this offensive line together. Because believe me, that's where it starts. When you can win in the trenches, which they sure. clearly did. They never won in the trenches. They dominated in the trenches. And that's why they, they uh, beat this team to sleep. And, and, and the other side of it, and you just said it, like when, when Zeke Elliott is running the football, they look like a completely different offense, right? When, he, when they either don't get him involved or he isn't effective, they look like one thing. And when he's running the ball on first down the way he was last night, they look very difficult to stop. They handed, to, handed it to him 21 times on first down last night, and they ran Ran it for over six and a half yards of carry when they Ooh. did that. When you get turnovers, oh. when you get field position, and you do that with one of the best backs in football, you're going to score 37 points at home, right? And right. so the thing for them is, like, don't lose focus of that. It's a fine balance. But when you're able to run the football like that, then that sets up these third downs where you can go make some conversions and you're not behind so much. You don't have to play from a position of safety where you got to be really careful with your play calls. And that's what allowed their third down success. They were 5 of 8 on third downs in the first half. Well, when you're running the ball so well and you get the third and two a bunch, it's it, that is a – I know we like to devalue running back. It still matters. Oh, heck yeah. You get somebody like that. You win on first and second down, it makes those third downs so much more easier. The game. And that's what we saw. And so the Cowboys and Eagles finished up what was a very interesting Sunday. Where does Dallas fall in the pecking order of the NFC? It's kind of a difficult question.